What's going on swim fans? Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday and in today's video I'm going to share with you the five biggest mistakes that swimmers make when it comes to breathing. Now breathing is a very very important topic for a number of different reasons. Of course you want to feel confident and comfortable in the water whether you're a beginner swimmer and you're just getting started or you're a more advanced swimmer and you're trying to push those underwaters to 15 meters or you're trying to do a 50 freestyle no breath. Whatever your goal is you've come to the right place to work on that breathing. In this video I'm not only going to share the five biggest mistakes that swimmers make, but I'm going to share different technique tips and different training methodologies that you can use to take your breathing game to that next level. Now, if you guys are new here, my name is Ferris Sabati. I'm the co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and here we help you take your swimming to the next level. So if you want to swim faster and smarter than ever before, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, and let me know what you think about your breathing down below in the comments. Let's go ahead and get right into it. The first mistake is poor body and head position. We know the water is so dense. When you're moving through this medium, it's so important not only to reduce drag and for your technique to have a proper body and head position, but oftentimes a lot of swimmers don't have their head in the right spot when you're trying to take a breath. So we're going to focus on freestyle for the scope of this first mistake. When you're taking your freestyle breath, you want to have it timed with the stroke. And we'll talk about the timing in just a little bit, but I want to really focus on what's happening with your head position and your body position. Remember, your body is flat in the water. Your eyes should be on the prize. The prize is the bottom of the pool or the lake or the ocean if you're swimming open water. And so when you're looking down, you're actually going to position your head in the ideal way to take a breath on your side. Because when you swim freestyle or any long axis stroke, freestyle or backstroke, you have this great rotation that's going on side to side. So when you take your hand, you place it in the water, and then you rotate onto your side. If your eyes are already on the prize, which is the bottom of the pool, that rotation is going to happen pretty naturally, and you're just going to tilt your head to the side. And as you tilt your head to the side, you want to focus on keeping one eye and one ear underneath the surface of the water. You want to make sure as if you're lying on your side and it's a natural rotation. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, how can I keep one eye and one ear in the water while I'm on my side? I'm just going to end up swallowing water if my mouth is, is completely submerged. And what actually happens as long as you're making forward progress and you have forward momentum in the water, you have that any little bit of velocity, you don't have to be going fast. You're actually going to create an air pocket. And with that air pocket, you can actually breathe. It's a really amazing when you watch in slow motion, when you look at a swimmer breathing on their side, regardless of the side, you don't actually have to be moving very fast. And you'll create this air pocket that allows you to get that breath. And then as you rotate back to the other side, your head is going to naturally sink back down where your eyes are looking at the bottom of the pool or the bottom of the ocean. So biggest mistake that a lot of swimmers make is lifting the head up. And that way, it makes your head in an awkward position position to get that breath on the side. So focus on keeping your eyes on the prize and try and keep one eye and one ear underneath the surface of the water. Now the second biggest mistake a lot of swimmers make is simply not having any kind of a consistency to their breathing pattern. So it's really important that you actually have a lot of comfort in how often you're breathing. Now in a lot of the strokes like free, uh, breaststroke for example, you breathe every single stroke. So the timing is sort of takes care of itself. It's pull, kick, glide, and breaststroke. With freestyle, theoretically you don't need to take any breaths. You can do a whole length of the pool and you can just not breathe at all. I don't recommend that unless it's a race, any of the shorter distances, you can get away with not taking a breath because it's short, it's going to be over. But if you don't have a breathing pattern that's consistent, you're not going to be able to sustain your swimming technique, your velocity, and of course your endurance for a long period of time. So it's super important that you have a breathing pattern and you time it within the stroke at the right moment. So we talked about timing, you stick your hand in the water, rotate onto your side. When it comes to the breathing pattern, there's a couple things you could do. You could take a breath every single stroke. That's too much rotation and quite frankly, you don't really need that much oxygen. It just interferes with the stroke. I more recommend breathing every two, three, or four strokes. And once you get past breathing every four arm strokes, you know, like every five, six, seven, something like that, well then you're getting into breath control training. We're going to talk about a few different sets that you can do and ways that you can actually train your lungs but it's really important to have a breathing pattern that you can do over a sustained period of time. And for most people, that's breathing every two strokes. Now for me personally, I always breathe every two strokes. I have a dominance on one side, and that's actually okay. There's something called bilateral breathing, which is where you breathe on alternating sides. So if you breathe every three strokes, you're actually gonna have a more balanced stroke, but that comes at a slight expense of having a breathing rhythm and a stroke rhythm. So it's important to be able to breathe on both sides. Come 
comfortably, but don't feel bad if you only breathe on one side and you feel more comfortable breathing on one side. Finally, if we talk about sprinting versus distance, we already mentioned it, but when you're doing a shorter distance, like the 50 freestyle, it's okay to not take any breaths. Maybe you take one breath or two or three. It's important that you know where those breaths are. I've seen plenty of swimmers in my coaching days where they are capable of doing the 50 freestyle in one breath or two breaths and they end up taking five or six because they have no mental game plan going into the race. When you go into a race, if it's a 50 or even a training set, know how many breaths you're gonna, tr you're gonna take and when you're gonna take the breath. So it's a 50 and you take one breath, you're gonna take it four strokes after the flip turn on the way back, something like that. So you basically have a game plan. And of course, distance, it's really important to have that breathing rhythm. Now, how do we talk about breath training? Because this is something that's really important. We can talk about this all day, what you're supposed to do, but how do you actually train to get there? At the end of the video, we're gonna talk about an actual swimming set that you can do to train your lungs. But training regularly, we talked about the consistency of breathing every two, three, or four, whatever it is, is so important. It's also important to train your lungs outside of the pool as well. And and this is something that's really cool with the advancements of technology. You can actually train your lungs and really become more confident and comfortable and expand the flexibility of your lungs and your physiology to actually improve your vital lung capacity and also develop your lungs to be stronger in the water so that you can swim faster and smarter than ever before. And so to see the real improvement in your breathing, you have to train it just like you would in the rest of your body. And today's sponsor can help with that. The AeroFit Breathing Trainer helps you improve your breath efficiency anaerobic threshold and vital lung capacity, which will give you the edge that you need to swim a faster 50, 100, 200, and any other event really. You'll start with a guided vital lung capacity test in the AeroFit Sport app, and then you'll begin swimming specific training programs that take just five to 10 minutes a day. Now, I personally use this, and after four weeks of training with AeroFit, I was actually able to increase my vital lung capacity by about 25%. I know that sounds absolutely nuts, but it's true. Now, it's super easy to use. The app gave me real-time feedback and tracks your progress over time. It feels like a video game, actually, while you're doing the breath control exercise sizes, so it's really, really fun and totally recommend this experience. Head over to the link down below in the description to get 10% off of the AeroFed Breathing Trainer. Now this is just for the MySwimPro community, so big shout out to AeroFed for hooking us up with this. It's absolutely awesome. I know you guys are going to love it. Thanks again to AeroFed for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the fourth biggest mistake that swimmers make. It's breathing in and out of the walls. Now if you, even if you're not a competitive swimmer, you've seen the flags at the pool. That represents you know, five meters away from the wall. And that's what we call the no breath zone. So ideally you train your lung capacity and your consistency in the pool so that you don't actually breathe inside the flags. That means coming into the wall on the approach of the flip turn and also coming off the wall. Now, uh, hopefully when you push off the wall, whether it's a flip turn or a fresh start, you're actually able to kick off and streamline well past five meters off the wall. But this applies as well when you're heading into the wall. You don't wanna focus on getting that breath right before your flip turn. You have to train ahead of time and really plan out your breath so that way you have the lung capacity not to slow down into the wall. That is the most important part of any type of swimming event. And if you're a triathlete, you might be trying to disregard, oh, I, I don't even do flip turns in open water or something like that. It's not true. Well, it is true that you're not necessarily doing flip turns. You might be doing something fun in there. But what I mean is by training flip turns and having this focus on breath capacity, breath control, you're actually improving your overall endurance. And that's what you really wanna be doing for open water as well as triathlon. So that's how you can train that in the pool by focusing on your flip turns and doing the flip turns and minimizing the amount of breathing that you do in and out of the walls because it's gonna develop your endurance. So whether you're a pool competition swimmer, fitness swimmer, triathlete or open water swimmer, all of that will help you develop that kind of endurance in and out of the walls. Now, another thing that, uh, a big mistake that swimmers make is not following any kind of structured interval training. We're gonna talk about an example set that you can focus on building your breath control in just a little bit. But this fifth mistake is basically just not following a structured workout. Basically, just trying to wing it. So we talked about winging it in the 50 freestyle and just diving in and hoping that you don't need to breathe. A lot of people follow the same methodology for doing a swim workout, and that's no good. If you're trying to develop 
any kind of skill or mastery or expertise, whether it's in swimming, weight training, or anything else in life, you wanna have a structured approach. So if you guys are looking for a structured training program specific to your goals that's dynamic, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app, available for iOS and Android, pool workouts, dry land workouts, they're personalized to you. So make sure you check out the app because you need to have a specific training program if you're serious about improving your lung capacity. And again, this, this is really key for not only beginners, intermediate and advanced swimmers, but regardless of your level, because it takes that level of consistency to see that improvement, whether it's in your breath control, stroke technique, endurance, or anything like that. Okay, now let's talk about this sample set. Now, this is actually taken from my college days. We used to do this set or a version of it pretty often, I remember. And here's the set. So you can go 1050s freestyle. Now this is assuming in a 25, in a short course pool. So 25 yards or 25 meters. And the interval's on the minute. Now, depending on your skill level, this could be uh, on a faster interval. Most likely it'll probably be on a slower interval, maybe on the 130, 120. Heck, maybe even the two minutes for the scope of what we're about to do. And what you're doing is you're actually focusing on how many breaths you take on each 50. So there's 10 50s, we're gonna break it up in half, we're gonna go two sets of five continuously. On the first 50, you're gonna take four breaths. And that's gonna be done two on the way down and two on the way back. Now again, this can be modified, so it could be maybe three on the way down, three on the way back, four, four, whatever it is based on your skill level. And on the next 50, you're gonna take one less breath. So instead of four, you're gonna take three, which is gonna be done taking two on the way down and one on the way back. You can actually reverse that. You can go one on the way down, two on the way back. This is actually a little bit more difficult. Uh, and then on the third 50, you're gonna go only two breaths. So one on the way down, one on the way back. On the fourth 50, you're down to one breath. So you're gonna take zero on the way down, one on the way back. And then on the final 50, you're gonna take zero breaths. Zero on the way down, zero on the way back. Now this is a more elite level set, and if you wanna make it a little bit simpler, you can drop the distance, you can do 25s instead of 50s, you can increase the interval, you can modify this to take more breaths, but the goal is to decrease the number of breaths you take to try and keep your heart rate low, keep your stroke connected, and you do that two rounds through. So this is a more advanced version, you can modify it based on your skill level, and if you can do these types of sets and you can train with something like the AeroFit trainer to increase the flexibility of your lungs and your diaphragm overall, you're going to be in a much better position so that way when you go swimming, whether you're doing it consistently for fitness or you're trying to compete, you're going to feel a lot more confident in your breath control abilities and that's how you swim faster and enjoy the overall experience. So if you guys have not already picked up my book, Swim Like a Pro, I talk about overall training, it's a holistic approach. Make sure you check it out, link down below in the description. And again, if you haven't downloaded the My Swim Pro app, we've got tons of training programs available for you. And finally, if you're not already in the My Swim Pro global community on Facebook, VIP group, absolutely free to join. We have over 10,000 swimmers in there from over 100 countries. It's linked down below in the description. So I hope to see you guys in there and push you guys to reach your goals and swim faster and smarter than ever before. Wish you guys the best. I'll see you in the next video and happy swimming.